Hello and welcome to Samba Drumming with Dave and Tim. Through our Samba Drumming episodes, there will be lots of practical tips and exercises to help you learn to play Brazilian Samba instruments. And you will learn techniques and skills that are used in Samba Drumming ensembles and baterias. A bateria is the word we use to describe a Brazilian drumming ensemble. Can you say bateria? During this introduction video, we'll explain how the series of videos will work. We'll explain what a pulse is and how that works. What is Brazilian Samba and where does it come from? And we'll teach you how to use each of the instruments that we're going to use. And how your Samba drumming ensemble or bateria will work in, in time, time together. together. During these episodes, we have a few helpful hints and tips that will help you and your development of Samba drumming. If you see a green sign like this, it means that we want you to join in and play along. Now that might be clapping the pulse or call and response or learning a rhythm or playing along in a groove. It will tell you when to play. If you see a sign like this, it means we want you to pause the video and practice the exercises we've been working on. If you see a sign like this, it means we want you to stop and listen as we're going to give you further instructions. Or we may want you to simply watch and listen to a demonstration of the instruments. If at any time you feel like you'd like to have another go at one of the exercises, or if you didn't hear what we said, please feel free at any time to press pause on the video. Rewind and have another look. Rewind and have another look any time. Take your time, do your best, work as a team and have fun. Let's have a look at a brief history of samba drumming and where it originates from. Samba drumming comes from Brazil in South America and samba drumming is a genre of music and rhythm and dance culture. It developed as urban music in the late 19th and earlier 20th century in the favelas or in the slums in Rio de Janeiro. Its roots, however, date back hundreds of years to customs and traditions brought to Brazil by African slaves. Let's take a look at the map. The slave trade was a period of history where Europeans forced Africans onto ships, shipped them across the Atlantic where they worked on plantations for the sugar industry. The African slaves were brought to Bahia and Bahia is a region on the northeastern side of Brazil next to the Atlantic Ocean. Bahia's first settled people were of Portuguese descent and it became an important area for growing sugarcane between 1500 and 1700. The Africans brought with them a dynamic range of culture including clothing, food, spiritual traditions and music and has had a major influence on Brazil ever since. This means that a lot of Brazilian rhythms and sounds are based on African music. Samba music is growing in popularity and is now played all over the world. However, the heart of samba can only be found on the streets of Brazil, especially at the Rio Carnival, which happens in April every year. We'll talk more about carnival later on in the series. Let's have a look at how we're going to work on rhythms together during the series using a pulse. What is a pulse? The pulse could be described as a steady beat, like the ticking of a clock or a heartbeat. We measure the pulse in something we call beats per minute, which is how many beats there are in one minute of time. We refer to this as the BPM. Now some music may have a really fast pulse or BPM, like this. Some music may have a really slow BPM, like this. Now this time, we're gonna play a really fast BPM and then a really slow BPM. And what we'd like you to do is to clap along to the pulse with Dave. 
let's try clapping along with Dave at a fast pulse. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Now let's try clapping along with Dave at a really slow pulse or BPM. One, two, three, four. Did you manage to clap together at the same time? From now on, we'll refer to that as being in time together. And that means we're simply playing all together on all of the beats where we should be playing. And it makes our music sound together. So now let's have a look at the instruments we're going to use throughout this series. Let's start with the surdu. Can you say surdu? Surdus are like a bass drum and make a deep sound and they come in all different sizes some of them really small, medium, all the way up to extra large some of them have one skin on the top like this we call that a head some of them also have a skin at the bottom or sometimes there's a huge hole in the bottom which lets the sound out you can either use two beaters or one beater and a hand. The hand mutes the drum. Beater hand, mute hand. Incidentally, a mute is when you stop a drum from ringing, like this. Mute. Mute. You can play surdu standing up using a sling like this, or sat down, or with the drum on the floor. Let's have a listen to the surdu and a look at how to play it. Have a go at clapping the pulse. The pulse is always going to be in groups of four, like this. One, two, three, four. Even if the pattern on the drum is different, the pulse is still always one, two, three, four. One, two, three, clap. Well done! Did you manage to clap the pulse? Did you clap the pulse in time together? So because we have different sized surdus, that means they make a different sound or tone when played. In this case, we use the word tone to describe the pitch of a sound, higher or lower. The smallest ones have a higher tone and the larger ones have a lower tone. For this video series, you'll need two different sized surdus, or sometimes sets come with three different sized surdus. The largest surdu we will call surdu 1, the medium surdu we'll call surdu 2, and the smallest surdu we'll call surdu 3. Have a listen to how the surdus sound with two different tones, and please do clap along to the pulse. Here we go, one, two, three, four. And now, three tones on the surdus. Clap along to the pulse. Three, four. Now, let's have a look at the loudest instrument in our band, the tambourine. Can you say tambourine? The tambourine is a very similar instrument to one that you may have already seen, the tambourine except the tambourine has no jingles. The tambourine is a high-pitched hand drum that we hold and play with a whip that looks like this. 
When we play a tambourine, it's important to keep our fingers away from the inside of the head. So keep your fingers on the side of the body like this. We then turn our drum down so the open part of the drum is facing the floor. Then holding the whip, we play the tambourine like this. Clap along with a pulse. Oh, one, two, three, four. Next, we have the agogo bell. Can you say agogo bell? The origins of the agogo bell, like many of these instruments, come from West Africa. Agogo means two notes, and it looks like this. Agogo bells come in all sorts of different shapes and sizes. Some look like this. The agogo bell will normally play a melody in a samba bateria but it can also play the exact same rhythms as the tambourine. Make sure you have the biggest bell on the bottom and the smallest bell on the top and hold the bell quite close to you so that it's super easy to play. Hold the stick in your other hand and keep it nice and bouncy. Try not to be too stiff. Let's have a look and see what it sounds like. Clap along to the pulse. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Now we move on to the Ganza. Can you say Ganza? The Ganza is an aluminium shaker and it produces white noise. Now white noise is anything that's not got a distinct pitch or a tone. When we play the Ganza, we hold it with one hand like this or we play it in two hands like this. Keeping our touch as light as possible. Whether you're playing with two hands or one hand, Make sure you're moving the ganza backwards and forwards, nice and freely, like this. Never move a ganza from side to side, because it means you've got no control over the inside of the ganza. Let's see if you can clap along to the pulse while I play the ganza. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Now we've looked at all the instruments, let's have a look at how to set the ensemble or the batteria out. When a band is lined up ready to play, we call this our formation or our block. And a block looks like this. At the back of the room, we have our surdus. Try to group the surdus together according to size. So we have our surdu ones on the left, the largest surdus, the middle surdus, surdu twos in the middle, and the smallest surdus, surdu threes on the right. In front of the surdus, we have our tambourines in one line. Then we have our agogo bells, and at the front, we have our ganzas all in a row. Our band leaders will stand in front of the band, facing the band, so that everyone can see any instructions they give. Press pause on the video and get everyone in your group together in a block formation so that everyone can see the screen. When we're working through these sessions, we may ask you to change instruments. And the easiest way to do that from working in a block is to move forward one instrument. So if we ask you to change instruments, the surdus would move forward to the tambourines, the tambourines move forward to the bells, the bells move forward to the ganzas, and the ganzas walk all the way down the side, right at the back, and go in and play on surdo. This is what we're going to be calling a rotation, where we move around the instruments, giving everybody a chance to play every instrument. The rotation. Now, get your teacher to take a picture of you all in your block formation. This will help you for next episode in remembering where you were sat. Press pause and take a picture. Welcome back. Did you all smile? Now this is how we want you to be sat every session. So that we're all ready to work, we'll have our instruments ready and we're sat in our block formation. Make sure that you sit 
for the next episode in the same position you finish the previous episode. Then when we do rotations, everybody's getting a chance to play every instrument. Now we've introduced all the instruments. We've had a look at where Brazilian culture comes from. We've had a look at our block formation and we've talked about playing in time together to the pulse. Now we'd like you to have a discussion around which facts you can remember about samba drumming. Here are five questions to help your discussion. Which country does samba music come from? Number two, which two countries or cultures formed the basis of Brazilian culture? Number three, can you name all of the instruments in your samba band. Number four. What is the huge event held every year in Rio de Janeiro in April called? Question five. What is the formation called that you get into when you're ready to play samba? Press pause on the video and discuss the five questions. Have a conversation about it and see what things you can remember. Welcome back. I wonder what you've remembered. Let's take a look at the five questions and their answers. Samba is from Brazil in South America and its culture is made up mainly of Portuguese and West African cultures. The instruments in a samba band are the surdus, the tambourims, the agogo bells and the gansas, as well as the kasha and the Hepanique. Every year in Rio de Janeiro, there's a huge event called Carnival, and the samba band's formations are called blocos or blocks. Now, let's finish this session by having a listen to a samba band. Me and Dave have created a video just for you to look so you can see what kind of things we're going to be doing later in further episodes. forward to getting started with this course so make sure before you start episode one that you've got your room ready that you've got your instruments ready and you're all sat in a block thank you for joining us we'll see you in episode one goodbye for now